Galatians is a passionate letter penned by the Apostle Paul to the churches of Galatia. The apostolic fervor and zeal come to life as he addresses the pernicious effects of a different gospel infiltrating the early church, a gospel that seeks to add human works to the perfect work of Christ on the cross. Paul's focus in this epistle is to defend the doctrine of justification by faith alone. This is the heartbeat of the Christian message. In the midst of defending this central tenet, we come across a powerful statement in Galatians chapter 3, verse 18. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. When we speak of dichotomies, we speak of contrasts, opposites, and often conflicting elements. Within the Christian faith, few dichotomies are as profound and significant as that of law versus promise. Both concepts are integral to understanding God's interactions with humanity, yet they represent vastly different aspects of His nature and the means by which He relates to His creation. The Mosaic Law, given to the Israelites at Mount Sinai, encapsulates God's perfect standard of righteousness. It provides a comprehensive framework for how God's chosen people were to live, worship, and relate both to Him and to one another. But more than a mere set of guidelines, the law acted as a mirror. Through it, humanity could discern its own fallen state, recognize its moral failures, and come to terms with its desperate need for redemption. Every commandment, every ordinance, every jot and tittle was a reminder of human insufficiency. To inherit blessings based on the law would require flawless adherence to its statutes, a standard impossible for any fallen human to meet. Yet, it's important to recognize that the law was never intended to be the solution. It was the diagnostic tool, highlighting the ailment but not providing the cure. Enter the promise. Centuries before the law was etched on stone tablets, God made a promise to Abraham. This promise was neither contingent on Abraham's performance nor predicated on his potential adherence to a yet-to-be-revealed law. Instead, it was an unconditional commitment made by a faithful God to a man who simply believed. This belief, this faith, was credited to Abraham as righteousness. In this act, we see a beautiful foreshadowing of the gospel. Righteousness attained not through works, but through faith. The promise to Abraham that through his offspring all nations would be blessed found its ultimate fulfillment in Jesus Christ. He is the seed through whom the blessings of salvation flow. In him, the dichotomy of law and promise finds its resolution. He perfectly fulfilled the law, meeting its every demand, and in doing so became the embodiment of the promise. In light of this, Paul's argument in Galatians becomes even clearer. The law and the promise are not two parallel paths to God's blessing. Rather, they are sequential revelations of God's redemptive plan. The law reveals our need, and the promise reveals God's solution. To attempt to mix human effort, law, with divine promise is not just a theological error. It is a negation of the very essence of the gospel message. Thus, when Paul wrote in Galatians 3.18 about the inheritance being either of the law or of promise, he was drawing a line in the sand. On one side stands human effort, always falling short, always failing. On the other, the gracious, unmerited favor of God given freely to all who would believe, just as Abraham did. The beauty of God's narrative throughout history is not just in the events, prophecies, or teachings, but fundamentally in the unveiling of His heart, a heart that is immutable and steadfast in its promises. When considering God's interactions with humanity, one observes a pulsating rhythm of love, grace, and unyielding commitment to His Word. Let us travel back in time to a moment in Mesopotamia where an elderly man named Abraham looked up to the stars. God, in his profound intimacy, told Abraham that his descendants would be as numerous as those shimmering lights in the night sky. 
It wasn't a conditional contract based on Abraham's deeds, but an unshakable promise rooted in God's own character. This moment is emblematic of God's nature. His promises are not fleeting whims, but are solidified in the bedrock of His being. Such unwavering promises are not isolated events. The tapestry of Scripture is interwoven with them. From the assurance given to Adam and Eve of a future offspring who would crush the serpent, to the rainbow set before Noah as a sign of never again destroying the earth with a flood, God's promises stand firm against the tides of time and human frailty. But why are these promises so significant? They represent the heartbeat of God's relationship with us. In a world characterized by change, uncertainty, and often betrayal, God's promises offer an anchor. They convey His constancy, His reliability, and most importantly, His deep love for humanity. Jesus Christ stands at the zenith of these divine assurances. Every promise, every prophecy converges in Him. Christ is both the herald and the fulfillment of God's unwavering commitment to reconcile humanity to Himself. He is the living testament of God's promise to Abraham that through His lineage, all nations would indeed be blessed. Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, draws from these deep wells of divine commitment. He underscores that God's promises aren't mere future predictions, but are divine covenants sealed by God's own nature. They aren't just words spoken long ago, but are echoing affirmations of His undying love for us. In essence, to understand the promises of God is to understand His heart, a heart that is unchanging, compassionate, and boundlessly loving. A heart that, despite our imperfections and wanderings, remains resolute in its commitment to bring us into eternal fellowship with Him. In the vast landscape of human history, amidst wars, revolutions, and cultural shifts, the message of Galatians emerges as a beacon of light, an eternal truth pointing us to the very core of the Christian faith. This letter from Paul is more than mere theology. It's the cry of a heart deeply burdened for souls to grasp the unparalleled beauty of the gospel. As we traverse the arguments, doctrines, and passionate appeals of the epistle, we arrive at an inescapable truth. The Christian message is neither about human achievement nor about ritualistic adherence. It's about the profound, radical, and transformative grace of God poured out through Jesus Christ. God, in His infinite wisdom, created a universe where His love would be showcased. But humanity, in its freedom, chose to deviate, breaking this divine human relationship. Yet, God's heart, rather than retreating in anger, moved closer in grace. The entire Old Testament reverberates with whispers and shouts of a coming Savior, a Messiah who would bridge the chasm between the holy and the fallen. Jesus Christ is the embodiment of this promise and the fulfillment of the law. In His life, He demonstrated the love of God, and in His death, He bore the weight of our transgressions. The cross, then, isn't merely an instrument of death, it's the emblem of the greatest love story ever told. On that hill, justice and mercy met, and humanity was offered a second chance. So what does this mean for you, dear listener? The gospel isn't a call for you to climb a ladder of good deeds to reach God. It's the proclamation that God, in Christ, descended to us. Salvation isn't earned, it's received. It's not about your merit, it's about His mercy. The open arms of Christ beckon you to find refuge, forgiveness, and eternal life. You might wonder, how can I receive this gift? The Bible offers a beautifully simple response, believe, just as Abraham believed in God's promise and it was credited to him as righteousness, so too, when you place your trust in Jesus Christ, you are clothed in his righteousness. In essence, the message of Galatians and the entire Bible culminates in this invitation. Come, no matter your past, your failures, or your doubts, the promise of God stands firm. 
Jesus has accomplished everything necessary for your salvation. All that remains is for you to receive by faith this boundless love. May your heart resonate with the truths echoed in Galatians, and may you find in Christ the eternal inheritance that neither fades nor fails, a promise held in the very heart of God from the foundation of the world. Thank you, cherished listeners, for journeying with us through this exploration of God's Word. Your presence and engagement are genuinely appreciated. If this message has touched your heart or illuminated the Gospel for you in a fresh way, we invite you to be a part of spreading this light further. Please do like this video, share it with friends and loved ones, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gospel Illuminations. Let's together spread the radiant message of Christ's love to every corner of the world. Until next time, may God's grace shine upon you.